I, I think over the years, um, I always did maintain somewhat of a relationship with God, but it was it was rather vague. I, I guess I always thought, you know, hey, things between me and God were, were cool. You know, things are good, but in reality, they weren't. Um, I got to the point where I'm looking around at my life, and um, I was divorced. I ended up getting demoted at work. I'm just looking around and, and, and I'm just trying to play mind games with myself going, hey, everything's just fine when it, it wasn't. How, how could I project this image of being this, this great, worthy Christian if, if I were to talk to people about my flaws? And that's, that's where I was at. I was, I was more concerned about looking good, giving the appearance of being a Christian. I, I'm thinking if I, if I could portray this image that maybe God would believe it too. I knew, I knew somewhere in my heart that I was not born again, and it was just a head conversion. I, I was trying to just really come off that I was this safe person when I knew in my heart I was not. Craig was teaching a series out of the book of Romans, and it was during that time that I started hearing some things that I really needed to hear at that point in my life. Romans 8, 5, it says those who live according to the sinful nature have their mind set on what the nature desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their mind set on what the Spirit desires. The mind of a sinful man is death, but the mind controlled by the Spirit is life and peace. The sinful mind is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those controlled by the sinful nature cannot please God. That's where I was at. I just, I was trying to have it both ways. And when I got to that point, um, I knew it was time. And Craig said at the end of the service that um, he was giving an invitation for anyone who was struggling with their walk. And if things were getting in the way of our relationship or coming to Christ, that we should stand up and that our congregation would pray for you pray with you and lay hands on you and I, I can remember thinking to myself I really don't care if I'm the only person that stands up I need to do this and so when he gave the invitation I stood up and I the first thing I, I remember was in my peripheral vision seeing probably at least a dozen other people standing up at the same time I remember it was Luis Gonzalez that stood up and laid hands on me and prayed for him or laid hands on me while he was praying I remember as I walked out, it was just like, I knew the floodgates were about ready to open and I'm doing all I can and all of my might to hold this together and as soon as I got out those front doors here at Red Cedar, it was just like the floodgates started opening up. I, I, the only way I could explain it is just I was just coming unglued at the seams. But it was like all the stuff getting cut free and, and I, I just felt this huge sense of of burn and weight being lifted off of me and giving that to, to, to God. And he was putting Christ there in my heart. It was a happy time. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't tears of sadness or sorrow. It was just, I don't know. It was just like someone just set free.